Yeah, so Manchester United losing in the Champions League again to Galatasaray was obviously a much bigger shock than losing to Bayern. Uh, I think that the, the start on the positive, I suppose, Rasmus Hoyland, uh, really excited about this player and he, he could have had a hat-trick. Obviously, he was offside, but the, the second goal was fantastic. I liked the predatory instinct on the first goal as well. I think if you put Rasmus into a Liverpool team or an Arsenal team or a Man City side where he's getting genuine, regular service, he's going to score a lot of goals and that's going to be the challenge for Manchester United. But away from that is where it all starts to go wrong. The balance of the team, I thought, was really bad. Um, I think that, all right, Harry Maguire or Johnny Evans aren't the long-term solution, but you could have played one of those, shifted Lindelof to right back, the low to left back, Amrabat in midfield, and straight away the team's just more balanced. Amrabat has been brought in and I think he'll be a very good midfielder but at left back he cost us two goals last night Mason Mount I thought did quite well last night but again I'm confused why we spent £55 million on a player that really cannot play with Bruno Fernandes because they both need to play centrally I'm not I'm not surprised but Man United have got a huge amount of problems at the moment and if I'm honest, I want Ten Hag to succeed. I think any talk of Ten Hag out is wrong because there's bigger issues at the club. But if you're honest with yourself, yesterday he contributed to a lot of the problems with how he set that team up. I think on Eric Ten Hag's future at Manchester United, it's interesting that TalkSport have also heard that his job is safe because that's something I've heard through what we do with the United stand. And I'm not surprised by that. Uh, I think in general, we did a poll on the United stand and 70% are still with Ten Hag, which when you consider the start of the season, it's horrific. Like the amount of games we've lost, it's not acceptable. But in a way, I'm encouraged by that. And, I, and it might not convey well to rivals because... We, you've got to know United to understand why United fans aren't necessarily going after the manager. We did it to Van Hal, we did it to Mourinho, we did it to uh, Oli and Ranić. So you do it again, who else comes in? Uh, and every time you do it, you inherit players of Mourinho's and Oli's and then Ten Hag's. And it's just, the problem Man United have is that team is just, I don't think Pep Guardiola gets that team to play Pep Guardiola football because it's, it's such a mismatch. And every manager you sack, it becomes more of a mismatch. What United need is a very big um, overhaul of the team from top to bottom. And then if a new owner comes in and says, I don't like the vision of Ten Hag and sacks him, I think the fans would go, all right, OK, it's a new start. Well, yeah, I was listening to Zlatan's interview with Piers Morgan and my initial reaction to that is not again. I think every time Piers does an interview with, a, with an ex-Man United player, his agenda against Ten Hag because he loves Ronaldo was clearly going to come through. Um, I, I didn't. I didn't agree with that. I mean, look, Zlatan to me is an iconic footballer and um, a legend of the game. But I felt that it was a bit of a hit piece on Ten Hag when he said that it's a bit of a. It might be a bit of a big job for, for Eric Ten Hag because what you've got to remember is it's very easy to say that Man United's a much bigger club than Ajax, but the reality isn't the, that case at all. I don't think the job's too big for Ten Hag. I think that's disrespectful. I just think it's almost mission impossible for any manager. Any Man United fan wants the Glazers to go, but if you got rid of the Glazers, it's still going to take two or three years. And, and, and I'd take that tomorrow as the number one thing. But quick fixes, I think injuries has, has, to, be, has to come into account. I think if you could play Varane, Martinez, Wambasaka, Luke Shaw, balance, stability is there. Uh, Casemiro, Amrabat, and either Bruno or Mount. I think United's problems are infinite at the moment and I think we're in for a very very long season is Anana a mistake for Manchester United well I said back in the uh, back in spring that I wouldn't have replaced David De Gea and it's not because I, I, I like Anana I think he's a good goalkeeper I said on Talk Sport in the summer that he comes in as the second best goalkeeper in the league for me and I'll own that because it looks absolutely ridiculous now but that's the goalkeeper I thought we were getting and I think that's the goalkeeper that I knew and many other people knew from his days at Ajax and Inter um, he's a decent shot stopper and he's very good on the ball at the moment I actually think a Norwich goalkeeper would do a better job. He looks, his distribution's poor. He doesn't look like he can save a shot. And to me, that's the reason why I never would have made the change this summer, because I'm old enough to remember that when we replaced Schmeichel, it went bad with Bosnich and Bartes and many others. When we replaced Van der Sar, De Gea wasn't great at the start. So I wouldn't be surprised if Anana does come good in six months or a year or even six weeks or maybe 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 against Brentford. But I always feared what, what has happened, that I've seen so many good goalkeepers that, oh, he'd be a good signing. And they come into the club and they struggle. 
Marcus Rashford is definitely under pressure. He's on a huge amount of money. We've just given him a new contract. You are the star of the team. You are the Kylian Mbappe of the team. You are the Saka of the team. You are the De Bruyne of the team. That's that's what Marcus Rashford is. You can't hide away from that responsibility and say it's not fair because that's the contract you've been given. That's the status you want. That's who you are. He has to deliver and he is not delivering at the moment. So scrutiny and pressure comes with the territory. You don't get the big books if you, if you can't deal with the pressure. Unfortunately, I mean, at the moment, his body language isn't great. He looks, I don't know what it is. Is he unhappy with the way the team's playing? Is he carrying an injury? Is he not happy with the team selections? I don't know, but he doesn't look comfortable. And that's always a concern for a player who is meant to be the star of the team. I mean, again, that with that with that influence and money and responsibility, you've got to be a leader on the pitch. And he just isn't. 